Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us down Mill Lakes, which is one of the new additions to the Barford complex. Now I've never fished this lake myself, but I've heard a few people catching some nice fish out of here, so we've come down a bit of the unexpected, but that's always adding the excitement to the journey. We've got the wind blowing down this corner, so I'm going to set up in a little swim just over the side there, and we're going to try and catch a few fish on the pellet cone. Let's go give it a go. Okay, as I said, we're going to be fishing the pellet cone today, and at this time of year when temperatures are cold, it is a really good way of fishing to offer small piles of bait just for one mouthful at a time. Pretty similar to the principle of PVA bag fishing, where you're just casting around your peg trying to find the fish, but with these water temperatures so cold, the PVA doesn't always melt. Today we've actually got a bit of snow on the ground, just in front of us in the swim, there's a bit of cat ice on the surface, so that's quite how cold this water is. PVA probably would take a while to melt. This is the reason I'm using the pellet cone today. We need to do a little bit of bait preparation. It does take a little bit of time. So the first thing to do when you get down to your peg, I've got a bait box here, full, half full of water. All I'm going to do is add some two mil pellets to it, up to pellet level. Make sure they all get submerged in the water. Now, if you leave that for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then you'll put the lid on, shake all the water off. This is where you now need to leave it for a little while. You probably need to leave it 20 to 30 minutes. So do this at the start of the session, then get your tackle ready. So all we do is we shake this off. Make sure you get most of the water out because it still leaves enough water on the damp pellets to, to soak it up while they're resting there. Now it's just a case of leaving them like that as I said, 20 or 30 minutes, and then we've got a little extra to add on them later. So what I'll do while we're waiting for that to get sorted, I'll go and have a look at the rig, then we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, we've got the gear set up nicely in the peg now. I'll quickly show you through the rig I use on my pellet comb fishing. It's quite nice and simple. First of all, a free running lead, it just runs freely on the line. That then comes down to a corn quick change bead. That is quite important in this rig because you do need to change your hook links quite often. I'll show you a bit more what I mean about that later. That comes down to 018 G line, which is quite strong actually. But like I said, there's some big fish in here, so we're getting getting geared up for those if we do manage to hook one. And I've got a Guru size 14 NWG hook on a bait band. I've got a nice little bait selection, so we'll be changing from throughout the day, different colours, different sizes, see if we can catch on anything. I've got two rods, they're both set up identical. One is because we've got a reed bed over there which I think we should be catching some fish from, so that'll be clipped up. The other one that I've got behind me will not be clipped up, will just be used for casting around the peg if we see a fish top or if we need to move. But that bait's been soaking now for probably half an hour, so let's quickly knit back over there and we'll have a look a bit more about the bait and a more detailed bit about the rig as well. Right, okay, the pellets are ready, they've been soaking for about half an hour or so. As you can see, on their own like that, they do squeeze together nicely. Now you could use them just like that, but I have got a little something I do add extra, and this does a couple of things to it. So all I'm doing is empty that bait box into a bowl, just make sure they all separate. So what I've got here is mainline syrup in pineapple flavour. They do loads of different flavours of this, I just like pineapple. It's a nice fruity smell for this time of year. All I'm going to do is squirt a good glug of that over the top. It's quite a yellowy colour. Put quite a bit on, then just give it a good mix around. What it will do, it'll do a couple of things. It will turn your pellets quite yellow, which I quite like that. I don't mind the visual side. But also, when that dries out a little bit in the sun, that makes it really sticky. I mean, you're getting a lot, lot stickier bait than you would with just solid pellet, which is really good when you're fishing a pellet comb. You need it to be stuck as firm as you can. So that's pretty much ready to go now, and that will get better and better as the session goes on. Let's go and start fishing. Okay, quick bit about the pellet cone, how to bait it and prepare it before we get out fishing. First of all, these are the pellet cones I use. They've got a few different sizes. 
a few different shapes, nice so you can change the quantity of bait you're putting in every one cast. You can buy properly prepared pellet bungs, but these ones are just cut ends of pole bungs that you would normally throw away, so it's making use of old stuff. I'll start on like a medium sized one for now. First thing you need to do, I've got my rig here, I've taken off the quick change bead, that's why I say it's important because you are changing your, your hook link quite regularly with this method. So I've got a yellow pellet on to match the yellow pellets we've done earlier. The first thing to do, within the finger and thumb, I'm just going to squeeze together the pellets we've got in this pellet comb. And make sure you squeeze as hard as you can, you can't really squeeze too hard at this point. Make sure that's nicely compact in there. And then all you need to do is thread your needle through the pellet comb. Make sure you always go the fat way first. Clip your bait needle on. Drop that onto your rig. Pull your hook into the pellet cone. Then just slowly through the smaller end. Ease it out. And you've got a nice pellet cone hanging on there. Then it's all a case of clipping it onto your quick change bead. And that's ready to go. Let's give it a go. Well that's the first cast in nicely. Just off the edge of that reed bed I said about earlier. Make sure you sink your line. Take a lot of care doing this. You don't want to be moving that lead or that cone. You want it to stay exactly where you first cast really one of the things you don't want to be rushing. Keep your rod under the water and slowly turn your handle if it's not quite sinking quick enough. That's no sun, so just in case of putting it on the rest. Nice bit of tension on your tip. And you're fishing. Now, fishing a pellet cone, as I said, it is cold, it is winter. This time of year, I wouldn't think anything of leaving that 25, 30 minutes sometimes before I moved it or put a different colour bait on or just change something. I mean, you're not going to be catching loads and loads of fish this time of year in most scenarios. You get the odd occasion you will, but most of the time you're just picking up one or two fish. As I said, in this lake, I think there is some really nice fish, so I'm not expecting to have loads and loads. If I can get one or two bites I'll be really chuffed with that so half an hour will be my first cast. So let's see what happens with that now. While you are waiting for quite a while between each bite it's always worth just getting another pellet cone ready and the hook link sitting on the side tray so if you do have one of those days where you're catching a few fish or you're having a little spell, you're not wasting time with your rig out of the water. You've always got one sitting next to you on the side tray. So it's just exactly the same process. I mean, you're not, you don't have to be touching your rod. Your rod can be left there while you're waiting for your bite. Get it nicely prepared. Now, because you've squeezed that so hard, that will stay like that for ages. So I just put it on the side of my bait tray, leave it there. And we're ready for the next cast already. Just those little bits of speed helps you catch that extra fish or two. Well, we've found the first fish. It's probably been about 20 minutes or half an hour. We had a couple of little liners first, which is always a good indication there's a few fish there. Off the spot that we expected where them rushes are at the end there. yellow ball at the side of his mouth. Nice mirror. Lovely little scale patterns on him. Beautiful fish. Absolutely freezing cold but 
Certainly warmed up our day. Oh, what a cracking little fish. Let's slip him back and hopefully there's a few more out there. And there he goes. Get back on the spot. We've already got a hook link prepared so it's nice and quick. It's just straight off that bead onto your hook link. Clip it back on, and you're ready again. <laughs>